Let's do some news! Or we can watch some Judge Judy. I'm cool with that too. You guys just want to stop the news and just fucking watch Judge Judy together? Can we do that? Can we do that? Are those... Are we allowed to just stream Judge Judy episodes? Like that? We should really do that. That'd be great. I would love to watch some Judge Judy right now. But, but we can't. We can't. We can't. Because we gotta do news. Today is May 17th, 2019. We are going to dive in to some news regarding Epic, WoW Classic, BlizzCon tickets, Microsoft and Sony, Microsoft and Minecraft, and maybe a little bit of Riley Reed. We'll see what happens. We'll see if we get there. All right. So first up, the biggest news. Seriously, that's the biggest news this week, actually. It's so funny. This is actually the biggest news that we had. No Randy stuff. And no and no Soldier Boy. Don't forget, Soldier Boy's in jail right now. So we're not going to get anything from him for a little while. But was it 247 days or something like that? Yeah. So. <clears throat> First up, publishers pull their gains from Epic Store during its big sale. Epic had its first uh, its first big sale this the this this week, and they had a number of games that were available for about like ten dollars off for most of them, um, and it was uh, you know a lot of people were pretty happy with it, but then some shit happened. <laughs> Games started just disappearing, just 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 gone, just like that. Uh, so the article title is so clickbait. We'll talk about that. I I will be the determin I will be the determining factor. Determining factor there, whether or not it's clickbait. I'm the host. I'm the host. I'm watching with Judge Judy now. Uh, <laughs> so yes, they had a mega sale where they're selling a bunch of games. It's basically, it's the same thing like every other store has. They had a sale. The first sale, they made a big deal out of it. Uh, but a couple of publishers decided they're going to pull out. One of them being for the game Vampire: The Masquerade Bloodlines Two. They decided to go ahead and take that, uh, take that and disc and remove it because, uh, well, that's one of them. The other one was actually Oxygen Not Included. Uh, and that one was uh, was kind of funny. I was I was like I was like whoa, a game a game studio that I actually know and kind of like is actually pulling out of a sale. That's pretty interesting. I wonder why. Uh, and so last night we actually talked about it a little bit in Discord and we came to the conclusion um, that uh, that it's because and it makes total fucking sense that the reason why these games are pulled is because one is probably not communicated very well, which actually was confirmed by an employee of, uh, of EGS, um, that it was not very well communicated to, uh, 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 to the studios. And the other was that, especially with the case of oxygen not included is that the game is launching in like a, what, a week, two weeks or something like that. Like, like going, like actually launching, right? Like not, not like, you know, it's already out. We already know it's already out. You know, those things work, right? A game's been out for like a year and some change, but it's actually launching in like two weeks. Why the fuck would they have it on sale right now? So, so they, uh, they decided to go and pull those, uh, pull those, uh, those games from their, uh, from the, from the store. And then, uh, super giant games also did something kind of funny they actually raised the price because their game Hades, which is on there, we played it uh, here on stream a little bit. Fun game, fun game. Back when I used to have Epic Game Store installed on my uh, on my um, on my com computer, um, they they actually raised the price and they came out later and said so. I guess the price was down to like six bucks or something like that after the sale, and then they ended up raising the price to uh, to basically bring it up uh, after the sale started. They said they had planned on raising the price or like already. And it just so happened to, you know, to be it was just bad timing that they actually went out. Uh, so they actually, that's when they came out and they said, which is kind of funny. Uh, just, just, just bad timing, guys. Just bad timing. Um, but the, the, it's, it's totally excusable that publishers don't want to have their games sold at a discount before they actually fucking go and sell the game, right? Like pre-sales. No, let's not discount those. Game that's launching in two weeks. No, let's not discount that. Uh, game that was going to have its price jacked up, I guess, eventually anyways. Okay, I guess, yeah, don't discount that. Yeah, it devalues the property. Exactly. They're protecting, they're protecting the value of the product. That's all they're doing. They're protecting the value of the product. So it's like, yes, a lot of, a lot of news outlets are taking that. As much as I love to rip on Epic, I love to rip on Epic. Fuck those guys, right? Uh, no, they're in the, they're, they're, they, they just did not communicate the sale very well. This kind of shit happens. The funniest part, though, the best part of this whole thing is that when you, when you go to go see, uh, like if you want to go see uh, Oxygen Not Included on the Epic Game Store, you're met with this. 
This is what you get on the Epic Game Store uh, website when you try to go and buy Oxygen Included. It's just gone. It's just gone. So <laughs> that means that they're, they're, they're only actual... I thought it was a Ninja Turtle at first. I was like, oh shit, it's a Ninja Turtle. And then I was like, oh, gross. Um, but yeah, the, 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 I guess the only option to uh, to make any adjustments to like if you want if you want to do something about these sales and such is to literally just delete delete the fucking page. Um, and so yeah, yeah, exactly. Like like Saren says, uh, if this is, any, this is anything about Epic, is how spaghetti their back end must be, or just featureless, just equally as featureless on the back end as it is on the front end. Uh, because yeah, this is what happens. Oh yeah, we don't like we don't like our game being on sale. Just boop four hundred four and a fucking page. That's it. <laughs> Um, yeah, Epic is sponsored the PC show at E3, and they made another way to say that, uh, that it does not mean that all the games featured at the PC show are all Epic exclusives. Um, but yeah, they're, they're gonna get their hands in everything. We're gonna, we're gonna have plenty of things to rip on them for, right? And we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. We rip on Steam whenever they fuck up. They just haven't been the ones fucking up lately. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we're gonna get, the Epic is not done. They're not done spending money winning you guys over, all right? They've already got some of you guys, but they have more money to burn to try to get more of us. You don't know. This time next year, you might be suckered in. I might be suckered in. Yeah, I, I, might, I might be part of that crowd, be like, Epic is fine. There's nothing wrong with Epic. I don't understand. Why is everybody, why is everybody so upset about Epic? It's fine. Totally fine. I don't remember having issues with it. But, but, but you had like six episodes of Just News. It was like 400 episodes ago. I don't remember that. What are you talking about? The episodes disappear. Um, I have a price. It's $5 billion. Yeah. Uh, well, Steam has, to be honest. Look at how bad indie sales have become on Steam. Why all indie is moving to, to Switch. No, indie is moving to Switch because it's a new platform and people are buying indies on there. That's, that's what that's all about. Um, yeah, Steam does not have any good discovery. And it's because they allowed... They used to have a policy where... Um, well, you guys remember this. It was the Greenlight program. Uh, so the Steam's Greenlight program, you used to have to, you used to actually get approved to get in. And then they try to change it to like, you have to pay to get in. Uh, and basically now it's like, it's so easy just to get your game on Steam, as we've seen. Um, and at one, at first it was like, it was like, oh, cool. This is now, now it's like an open platform. Anyone can put a game on steam. Well, as, as somebody who was knee deep in Xbox live indie game market stuff for a number of years, that is not good. <laughs> that is, you don't want to just have, let anybody, anybody just throw their game on, uh, on their platform. Cause you're going to be stuck with a lot of garbage. What was that game? Uh, Epic Island, as uh, Epic Island Adventure or something like that. Some of you guys may not remember this. Actually, a lot of you guys may not remember this, but, uh, yeah, it was like Island Adventure one, two, and three. There was three series of it, man, man, just, just some serious sh shitty shovelware. Um, but it had some, but it had big, big CG titties. Uh, Soda Drinker Pro was actually a win. I, I called it too, and everybody loved it. I was like, this is the best game ever. And then all of a sudden, it was like Soda Drinker Pro Game of the Year edition. And everybody was like, this game is amazing. All right? All right? I called that shit early. I was, I was in there before. Before it was cool. And call it out. Yeah. Yes. See? What's up? So, anyway. So, yes. Uh, there are some games being pulled from the Epic Game Store. and. In every instance we've we've seen so far, it was because of a pricing miscommunication, pretty much, pretty much. Um, and then what happens? They get a 404. So there we go. Next up, next up, bonus soda. Man, God, that game was great. Bonus soda, just the best. Uh, the game that game was just Island Adventures. If you want to see it on YouTube later, chat. There you go. Yeah, it's up. All, it's up on my page. It's actually some of the most popular uh, indie games I covered. I wonder why. I I took advantage of those thumbs too. Those thumbs had those thumbs had those damn. It was just basically boobs uh, in the damn frame because people clicked on it. And what happened? It was like the most popular damn videos I put out. Just put titties in the thumbnail. That's all you gotta do. Next up, classic. Talk about way back when. Here we go. August twenty seventh. 2019 classic is gonna drop you could play world of warcraft 1.12 or you could just be tired of it before then because you've already watched other people play it for months before it actually launches which is pretty much what's gonna happen which will make the actual launch itself extraordinarily lackluster and everyone's gonna play for like three days and go back to what they're whatever they were doing 
after the uh, after the, uh, the the initial nostalgia kick wears off, which makes me sad. Do you think Josh Allen would give you a beta invite? He, I mean, he might if he had that power. Um, but uh, but I, I have not exercised that at all. I'm actually kind of okay with that. I'm doing I'm doing okay right now. I'm doing okay right. Now. I'm not sure if I want to get in, get involved, and then like you know not be interested when it launches. Although as a streamer. That's where I'm, I'm making a, a grave mistake. I should definitely be in there playing it and doing all that business so you guys could watch, right? Because that's what people are watching right now. 100,000 people watching Asmongold. However the fuck it's pronounced. <laughs> I just I just never heard it said out loud. Uh, watching him play. <laughs> play Classic. Classic is enough of a grind uh, that I wouldn't want to play it if my shit is just going to be wiped anyways. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's the other thing, too. That's the other thing as well. Don't want to. I don't necessarily want to play anything that's going to get wiped. And getting to level thirty in uh, in classic is not. It's not cake. It's not cake. Um, it takes a little bit of time. So the first stress test uh, has uh, kicked off or kicks off May twenty second. There's obviously a few people that are in early streaming right now on Twitch. If you want to go watch them, uh, and the third and final test uh, appears to end Friday, July nineteenth. So you're gonna have plenty of. Um, you know, plenty of, uh, what's that? What is it? The first, the first Alliance 30 I saw was about 30 plus hours in 30 plus hours is, is a, is a minute, dude. I don't know what you're talking about. 30 plus. It, it takes like five minutes to get to level 30, uh, in, uh, in current in live, but, uh, oh, mage. Oh, totally. Then once you get to like level 22 or something like that, and you just get your, uh, you can basically get your, uh, your AOE farming. That's it. Like you're, you're basically done. You go out to, uh, where do you go? You go to Duskwood. And there's a couple of farms that you could go to, and they have a whole bunch of just mobs floating around on the farms on the field, and you just basically go through and just kite them. Do, 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 do. And that's how that's why I used to level my my mage. Um, level 22, arcane rank two explosion. That's probably what it was. Yeah, I remember it was like level 22 or so. You could get a setup where you could just basically uh, just kite people and kite a bunch of people and just basically that's it. Frost Nova, kite, 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 Blizzard, uh, kite, kite, kite. AOE, whatever. Um, so, uh, character creation, and this part's pretty important, I think. Uh, character creation is going to open August 13th, 12th for Americans. Uh, and active subways at the time will be able to create up to three characters. So, up to three characters. And that's, uh, uh, and that's it. So, you gotta get your names locked in as soon as possible, on, I guess, on whatever server you're at. Actually, you know, while we're talking about this, chat, uh, I, I haven't watched any vanilla streams um, because it's boring to watch. Uh, <laughs> but uh, have you guys... Uh, uh, what, are, are people mostly rolling PvE, or is there even a PvP server, or is it all just one server? Like, uh, how many servers are up? Like, I'm curious. Like, what? I'm guessing everyone's going to roll PvE because they're streamers, um, and they, they have to roll PvE. Is it all PvP? Really? Most roll PvP. Oh shit, we'll see if that lasts. I bet that does not last. I have money. I, I bet money that majority are gonna roll PvE once actual servers drop. Including my fucking self, because... Because, because for reals, back in the early days of streaming on Twitch, if you streamed on Twitch... On a PvP server... Actually, not even early days, just fucking all the time. Uh, yeah, you'll get ganked. You'll get ganked. But yeah, it will not, uh... There's no way. There's no way. I can't, I can't see it happening. Some of these, some of these guys who are playing, playing wild, I'm like, you guys will PvP. Get on my face. Get on my face. Uh, so yeah, you guys looking forward to that. August 27th, 2019. Um, I'm genuinely curious how many people are going to end up playing this game because that's a stupid amount of people watching it right now on, uh, on Twitch. Like just, just ridiculous. Like actually, I'm going to, I'm going to go and, uh, let me see. I'm going to go pull up the front page of Twitch. We'll get some real time numbers right now. Twitch.tv. Let's see. It is I, I the reason why I, I hit the screen is because I don't trust what Twitch puts on its front page. I might I might actually get banned for some of the stuff they put on their front page. Uh let's see. Asmongol is currently streaming to 44,000 viewers. Oh shit, it's dead. Um game's dead. Oh, that's because Soda Poppin is streaming to 54,000 viewers. So right now there's 144,000 people watching uh watching World of Warcraft streams. And so, I mean, let's just I'm curious actually what what they're doing. What is he doing? He's probably going to get an ad. No, no ad. And what is he doing? He's, uh, where is he at? He's in Storm and Keep. Oh, he's, do oh, he's doing the mission in the keep. That's right. There's a mission in the keep that you have to do. Uh, you're, you're helping out somebody do, uh, uh, what were they? I can't remember. It's been so long. Um, 
But yeah, some like long quest chain that takes you right into the right into the quest. I think you get a a ring. I think you get get a ring for that one. Uh, a pretty decent size or neck piece, something like that. So there you go. So you can go and watch that. I know. Wake up, wake up, guys. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to put up that classic footage right there. I know it's rough to watch. Um, Anduin is still king in vanilla, but what? Shut up. Uh, <laughs> uh, but with all that classic news, all that good classic news that we were getting, we also have uh, some not so good news that just seems like classic Blizzard. So. The app that we purchased the, um, or the, the site that the service that we purchased the, uh, the BlizzCon tickets from turns out they have a resale option. So you could buy a ticket from the AXS, uh, service. And then within the app, you can turn around and resell it for whatever price you want. Basically keeping the, the scalping business in-house don't have to leave and then axs gets, gets a cut and they get a significant cut and actually the math has been done here at the bottom thank god because i'm not gonna do it uh but yeah so there are many buyers in a rush will get their tickets before they sold out and never notice the original tickets were sold with a 5.25 web convenience fee for regular tickets and a 3.94 percent on portal passes this means 229 dollar ticket actually costs 241 dollars and two cents and a $550 portal pass actually costs $571.65. While this kind of surcharge is to be expected from, for virtually all online ticket sales, it's still a bit misleading given the announced price of $229. And considering AXS was the sold ticket seller, they might as well have just said the tickets would cost $241 and $571, respectively. To be clear, this type of convenience fee is quite common, expected, and should not evoke outrage. BlizzCon 2018 tickets were similarly announced for $199, but actually sold for $214. It is only relevant due to the additional calculations below. While sellers can name their own price, an extra 22.5% reselling fee is tacked on for the buyer. This means reselling a ticket for the original price of $229 actually, be cost the, actually cost the buyer $279.38. The seller is also charged a 7.5% selling fee taken from the listing price. This means the listing, that listing a ticket for resale at the original price of $229 only nets them $211.82.5. Or $29.20 short of what they originally paid with the web fee. So in order to completely break even on the original list of price of $229, a reseller would need to list their ticket for $260 to cover the 7.5% seller fee, which would actually cost the buyer $319.19 with the 22.5% reselling fee, equating to a combined 39.38% markup on the originally listed ticket price. And all of that just to cover AXS's fees for this. Yes, this is AXS. This is their fees. But is the onus is on Blizzard for having selected this app, uh, this service. So, how much, how much does Blizzard get as a kickback from AXS? Well, they wouldn't get a kickback, but they definitely made some kind of deal initially. And, we could say, let's just say that Blizzard is completely innocent. They had no idea that this app has a very clear and cut function inside of the service itself to actually take your app or take your ticket and then resell it to someone else. Maybe they completely missed that. But they will. They, 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 they more than likely took a pretty good size uh, payment for uh, to actually for, for for exclusivity on the ticket prices themselves. Sorry, someone's at the door. Good, it's nothing. Just making sure. Um, oh. So <laughs> what? So we could say that you could say that Blizzard is naive in this, but somebody fucking knows. Somebody. I think that Blizzard just maybe. Mister Motorcycle Guy likes to go by. And fuck. Uh, more than likely, what happened is Blizzard took a huge payment for the actual rights to be the exclusive sellers of the tickets, uh, and in that price, AXS knew that they were going to turn a profit on people selling the tickets for a markup. Of course, they did. AXS knows because it's their service, so they knew when they went in to the, to to make the deals that they knew that they can afford to do blank because they make. X amount of money on the side. Um, 
Thank you, Motorcycle Man. I'll give you that. <laughs> Fine, I'm fucking Motorcycle Man. Uh, Active Blaze knows when you're running private wild servers within moments of you booting those servers up. Doesn't know their app is supporting easy scalping. Seems legit. I think Blizzard don't want to be the ones uh, for ticket sales. They've done it before and decided it's not worth their effort. So they farm it out to a company that does it professionally. And yeah, professional scalpers. Um, hey, Blizzard, your Activision is showing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty much, I mean, honestly, it's pretty disappointing. It's pretty disappointing uh, that uh, that Blizzard, who has been very much against any kind of scalping, but not really necessarily like that um, proactive in trying to like really deter people from doing it. Like they put a couple things that, oh, yeah, after a certain date, you can't change the name um, or you can't sell tickets on, you know, on the battle net forums or something like that. Uh, yeah, they, they've been pretty good at trying to keep some of that under wraps but they haven't been trying hard enough not so much to me i don't feel like blizzard really gives a shit that people scalp tickets i honestly don't think they give a shit um and and, and it shows i mean there were entire sites uh, i actually bought a ticket from a um no i sold a ticket i sold a ticket on a third party site and it was just all it was was just basically a, a, it was a huge site it was like blizzcon tickets or somewhere blizzcon uh, traders or something like that i don't know what it was but uh yeah i sold a ticket on this on this service and it was somebody that lived locally and uh and that was it i, I mean i sold it for the same amount of money that i bought the damn thing for but i guess i could have marked it up but there were prices on there where people were were marking it up so yeah it i don't think blizzard really cares guys i don't think they've ever cared Maybe, I mean, okay, maybe at some point, maybe like early on, they're like, we should really stop scalpers, but I don't think, I don't think they give a shit. No way. Or else, if they did, if they really did give a shit, then they wouldn't allow this to happen. They would work it into the contract that this particular feature is not to be enabled for tickets purchased through this app. They would have just done that. That's all they would have done. And problem would have been solved. And that's it. But they didn't. So you could say, what are you going to say? Oh, they didn't know? Of course they knew. Of course they knew. <laughs> of course they they knew they knew that uh this this uh this part of the service is available they just don't care about scalpers guys they just don't care um so yeah i mean you know hopefully you guys already got your tickets otherwise you guys are gonna be i don't know uh picking up a ticket for what is it let me see there's one for twenty thousand dollars <laughs> I don't probably not going to sell that one, but uh, their app checkers were laid off in the 800 earlier. Oh, that's right. That's right. They had a specific d department just for checking uh, uh, checking apps like that. Uh, speaking of scalping, the new 15 year collector's edition sold out and now be, uh, on eBay for three times the price. But like, what can they do? Like, I mean, seriously, what can they do? The music industry has been having issues with this forever. Uh, it's not like this is new. This is just, this is just, I. They have to just concede. But what are they going to do? Yeah, they, there's certain things they can do to kind of help fight it. But, I mean, I saw a suggestion saying, a suggestion was uh, that one one person, one, one Battle.net account equals one ticket. And the problem with that is, and I think there was, a, there was a point in time in early BlizzCon days where you could only buy one ticket. And you couldn't, and people couldn't get tickets for their significant others. And so they get a ticket for themselves, but they couldn't get anything for their SO. And so they'd show up and they had to like basically hand off the ticket or the, the badge to, to a friend. Um, I have like four, yeah, or you just make a bunch of Battle.net accounts. But really like limit what, limit sales to two per address. Then you just have them, just have them sent to different addresses. How many addresses, you know, we know more, you have more than one address. I mean, there, you could say, you could say use a different card, you could whatever, but there's always ways around it. We're this is not new. Scalping is not new, guys. And it's just something that, I mean, it sucks. It sucks. It fucking sucks. Uh, but, I mean, the, the best way I've seen, the best way I've seen um, ticket scalping being curbed is exactly what Ira said. No, I'm not kidding. Uh, selling tickets at the door. Um, Nine Inch Nails did that here in the Bay Area, in San Francisco. They, they sold tickets, uh, I want to say, like, right before the show or something. Um, or a couple weeks before the show and you, but you had to be in line and you had to buy the tickets. You only got two tickets and they're in your name or whatever. Um, and that was pretty much it. And that was like the, I guess that was the, that was the best I think I've seen It's like selling tickets at the door is the only way to really do it. And then you just lock everybody else out. Um, 
Jeez. <laughs> or they should just, I don't know, just sell all their tickets on eBay and just let them all go to the highest bidder. Just put like 40,000 tickets up on eBay. Uh, that's awful. That's awful for anyone making travel plans, though. It really is. It really is. But I'm but that I'm telling you, like, there's, I mean, I'm sure on, on the YouTube video version of this, there's going to be a lot of people with a lot of different suggestions and everything like that. But, uh, uh, you know, there's ways around so many, there's so many ways around all these different methods that people have used in the past to try to, you know, circumvent and, and try to cut off scalpers. It's just... It's just, I just feel like it's, it's an uphill battle. Uh, I was working at Target when the NES Classic released. I had to sell one to someone who straight up told me they're going to scalp it because they, they are still buying it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, they can only buy one, but there is nothing the seller can do. That, that happened with the Wii, actually. That was a big deal with the Wii. The Wii was fucking huge. You guys remember when the Wii came out? It was not long ago. It was like 10 years ago, uh, 12 years ago, 13 years ago, 14 years ago. Oh my God. It was a long time ago. Uh, but yeah, when the Wii came out, it was the same thing. Like people were just buying them just to resell them. I was trying to buy one to resell it because it was such a hot item. Uh, and so, yeah, it was, that was a big deal. I was in line. I was in line before I worked at Comp USA, which was right around the corner from, uh, um, from, uh, uh, um, a Best Buy and the Best Buy was selling them. So every day before I went into work, I would, I would swing by and wait in the line and see if they had some on the shipment and they never had any. I was really disappointed. Um, I ended up getting one after, after all the hype was over and I couldn't resell it. So I kept it, homebrewed it and now it plays all my NES games. Ta-da! That's it. Now I have an NES classic, which pretty much makes it defunct. So, uh, so yeah, that's it. Uh, <laughs> I love the Wii. The Wii is awesome. It's a great, such a great system. Uh, speaking of not Nintendo, but people that make video games, I was playing. What flipping my Switch pre-order? If those ended up hard to find. Uh, so speaking of, we got a partnership here between Microsoft and Sony for uh, for to form cloud gaming and AI partnership. This is a uh, this is a pretty big deal. This is a pretty big deal for a number for a number of reasons. Um, one, it's it's Microsoft and Sony actually like working together uh, on it. Still no cross play partnership. Well, they're they they can't just go all in with all their good shit. They have to start. They have to start somewhere. Uh, and this is this is a place. The reason why they're starting here is because of uh, Stadia, because of Google. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. They are they're doing this because Stadia Google Stadia is freaking them out. And the only way they're going to be able to, uh, the only way they're going to be able to fight the, uh, <laughs> the, the white walkers of, uh, of Google Stadia is to unite the kingdoms. And, uh, and then there you go. So that's what's happening. Like Google Stadia, for those who don't know, it's basically Google's uh, announced street game, video game streaming service is going to be integrated into their, uh, into YouTube. So you can actually, the idea is that you can actually go through and watch a YouTube video on a specific game and then click a button, play that same game inside of the same browser. That's, that's pretty incredible for somebody that, you know, I mean, just for anybody really. Um, and it's a big deal because one of the biggest, the, one of the biggest uh, uh, things in games is like your install base, right? Like, look at Epic Game Store. Epic Game Store got a great start because why? They had a massive install base. Uh, Steam. Steam's not going anywhere anytime soon. Why? Because of a massive install base. Guess what? Everybody watches YouTube. What does that mean? That means that they have an install base of a fucking billion. Like, they have everybody. It's huge. And so, the only way that Microsoft and Sony are going to be able to compete is if they start working together. Nintendo seriously can just exist by itself siloed off in its own area because somehow somehow nintendo just does somehow still manages to do things right like for the most part they do things wrong but but the the right outweighs the wrong and they can exist in this tiny little bubble that is just a nintendo bubble and they don't have to worry about all this shit <laughs> google will never take down nintendo it's just not gonna happen never count nintendo no they're they're yeah mario maker 2 yeah there you go uh, they don't have to. Yeah, they, they don't exist in our, in our real plane of existence. They really don't. They don't really exist in this industry in any competitive form. They just exist, and that's it. Uh, and so, yes, Sony, Sony and Microsoft teaming up for the streaming service that, that, that's the to be announced streaming service, uh, so that way they can bring video games and shit to, uh, to everybody. And that is a huge deal. I think it's awesome. Because I'm, I'm curious now, because now the next thing we're going to see is uh, in the competitive market, we're going to see Amazon. Amazon's going to have their own video game streaming service. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to see, um, obviously, Microsoft and Sony, and we're going to see Google Stadia. And so we're going to have this, this, these, these three big competitors. It's not going to be, it's not going to be the Xbox versus the PS4 versus the Nintendo versus 
that's pretty much it. Like really, that's kind of all it's been forever. Uh, it's going to be Google, Microsoft, you know, teaming up with their, their games will be available to probably both platforms or something. I don't know. Um, again, ni- Nintendo off on its little Island doing its own little thing. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and then, um, and then Amazon and, uh, and Google. So, uh, I'm pretty sure this is more than, uh, than more that Sony will use Microsoft's backend and they will have one joint service. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Microsoft does have the backend cause there's only, a, there's, really, there's really only two options for, uh, for like hosting and backend support and, and, uh, and all that. And it's pretty much like Microsoft and, and Amazon. Um, so I think I, I, Google, sorry, Google. So Google and Microsoft and Amazon. So, um, I think in this case, they really didn't have a choice. They had, they, Sony really kind of probably had to do this. <laughs> this probably wasn't so much Microsoft as it was Sony just kind of like, we got to do something, man. We're going we're to get obsoleted. We're going to get obsoleted right out of this, out of this industry. We can't, we can't keep on just cranking out remakes and everything. We got to do something. Um, where everyone bought the Nintendo was dying from the 64 through the Wii. Oh, <laughs> thought Nintendo was dying. Yeah. Well, they, they did have a few rough years. Uh, in there, but uh, but the Wii pretty much changed everything somehow because it was awesome. Um, so yeah, I guess what I guess what to say, I have to wait and see how that turns out. But until then, let's talk about Minecraft. I'm sorry, Microsoft. Oh, I spoiled it. Microsoft's other endeavors, Minecraft Earth. There's a plane flying overhead, really low. I guess like a crop duster, something going over, going over here. Uh, Minecraft Earth, mine, Microsoft. Yes, Minecraft Earth is, um, it looks pretty fucking cool. I'm not going to lie. No, no, you know thanks, Sir Serix. You know thanks. Don't get crazy. Hold on a second. This shit is, this shit is awesome. All right. You know what? I'm going to play, I'm going to play the video, even though the video doesn't really like, really accurate. It doesn't like accurately. Uh, uh, show what the game is going to play like, I will tell you what the game is going to play like. So, imagine Pokemon Go, which is definitely their number one competitors. Um, and for Pokemon Go, you have two phones. They don't see the same thing. You have an overhead map, right? And in that overhead map, you could see it. Oh, yeah, you know what? There's a... Uh, uh, you know, there, there's, there's a, a, whatever, the fucking Pokemon bird or some shit nearby. <laughs> and so you go and you could, you could battle it. You could catch it and whatever. Yeah. I caught this fucking Pokemon bird. And then that's it. Somebody else right next to you. Maybe doesn't even see that, right? They see something different, but Minecraft earth is actually going to allow multiple devices called a Pidgey. I was trying to think of the name. I couldn't. It's fucking Microsoft bird or uh, Pokemon bird. Uh, so uh, Minecraft Go, as we'll call it, Minecraft Earth is actually going to have um, a singular world where you can see what other people are dropping in exactly the way this video shows, right? I'm actually going to do this here, loop. Um, you will be able to build, obviously, dicks and then put them in the middle of like, I don't know, like the street or something like that. Um, and other people will be able to see it at the same time that you are. So you could have like multiple devices looking at the same thing in the real world, uh, using obviously augmented reality, reality, uh, reality. Wow. Um, and you just leave shit there. Like that's exactly the way it shows. This is actually pretty incredible. Like, from a technological standpoint, like, this is pretty incredible that multiple people can actually go and play this game together, and they can all see the same thing. They are going to have these nodes called tappables that they're going to, uh, they're going to have spread throughout the world. They're going to be careful. They're going to learn from Pokemon Go's mistakes uh, and make sure they don't put them in, like, somebody's yard or something like that. Uh, But they're going to have... um, Tappables where you actually go through and you could collect resources so you could go and take them home and build things with it. Uh, I think the way it's supposed to work is you could go home and you can you can actually build something like on a small scale. You can actually sit there and kind of like at your kitchen table and kind of I think it shows in the video. Uh, you can actually build something a small scale and then you could take it out in the real world and like plop it down somewhere if you want. This shit is fucking cool. 
Like this, yeah, it's like, like a virtual digital art gallery all over the world. Yeah, this is... Everyone will be fucking with everyone for a week before everyone stops caring as they as they can't do anything. I, I'm 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 actually genuinely curious if there's gonna be some kind of limitation to how many things can exist in a certain area. Because with so many like items and, and things popping up all over the place at like a park or something like that, miles and miles of nothing to do. That's I'm I'm actually looking forward to the videos of people like, look at all this, we're just driving down the road and there's like dicks like all over the place. That would just be amazing. Uh, and this is something that obviously Microsoft's AR team is working on. They have their uh, their AR AR goggles uh, <laughs> that they are uh, uh, Hololens. That's what it's called. Um, they're gonna try to work it into that, I guess, so you can actually build your your uh, uh, your creations and do that. Uh, I'm gonna at task my team to build a dick. What a dick! I'm pay will be proud of what? Uh, oh, pay would be proud of. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And a bunch of inches. Oh man. Um, Dick detection department. We still have the most structurally sound dicks you've ever seen. That's right. That's right. So yeah, this actually looks pretty incredible. Uh, no, no release date or anything that I've seen. Um, I am Pei is a famous architect. Oh, did did he was he in that uh abstract series or or any of those other series on Netflix? Because if not, I don't, I don't know. Um, another reason to keep your <sighs> Jesus, this Automod's on on fucking alert today. Uh. Probably the most important thing, I guess, which is noted here for some reason. I, not that something I thought of that would be an issue, but uh, oh, look, this guy's about to sword this pig. That's fucked up. Um, but the biggest thing is no loot boxes for Minecraft Earth. There we go. So in case you're wondering, I know that's the first thing you guys are thinking is where is uh is there gonna be loot boxes? The answer to that is no. So yeah, like this is how you can basically sit there and with friends, it's gonna build stuff. Um, I, I, this is, this is actually some pretty incredible stuff. This is like some serious, you know, we're in the future types thing. Like it's just taking the AR thing and linking it up with other people and be able to build and do all this stuff. It's fucking cool. I probably play, I would totally play this with my son at least. And maybe by myself, <laughs> just start building stuff. Um, so yeah, you can look forward to that someday. Each block will cost 0 0.05 cents. There you go. There's going to be timers or something shitty. I bet. Uh, yeah, I'm curious. I don't know what they're going to do to actually pay for all this stuff, but um, I guess we'll have to wait and see exactly what they released with because we don't really know. Oh, hey, Donut, you came in. Donut, hey, cut the shit. Donut, lay down. Go to your bed. <laughs> he just came up chasing Sunday, just tearing ass all through the hall hallway. Um, let's see. Next up. Next up. This one. Uh, you guys watch League of Legends? You guys heard of this game? I know you guys don't. Nobody does. But you should know that uh, in the Echo Fox uh, organization, which is a team uh, owned by Rick Fox, founded by Rick Fox, should say, it says the LCS has concluded its preliminary investigation into the, al the alleged comments made by a member of the Echo Fox ownership group, not a team member. Usually when somebody's saying some racist shit, it's one of the actual team members. This is one of the investors that's doing this. Uh, hate speech threats, hate speech threats, and bigotry have no place in the LCS. We have directed Echo Fox to take appropriate corrective action within 60 days. If Echo Fox does not take action by removing any individuals whose actions violate league rules and agreements within the required time period, the league will take formal action that may adversely impact the future of Echo Fox in the LCS. That's Chris Greeley, the LCS commissioner. Um, Dude, there's a lot. Are you kidding me? There's a there's a lot of uh, uh, there's a lot of no. But Shaq, does Shaq have a team? Have a esports team? Uh, of course. There's so much money. I was gonna say hella money because we were talking about hella earlier. And you guys fucked me up. Uh, so I decided to do a little digging to see who was it. Who was it? And I found out that it's actually um, Amit Raizada, who made who made his fortune or at least a good chunk of it with payday advance loans. So already, already, you know, this guy's probably not the most savory individual because payday advance loans are the devil. Uh, scumbag. Yeah, already, already, scumbag. <laughs> so, uh, he has apparently been the one named as the individual who, um, who has been saying racist and, uh, I guess a number of things. There's, there's actually no example. It's basically racist and anti-Semitic. 
text. So here's, I mean, here's, I guess, a collection of texts. I'll do whatever is in my hands to give you better years ahead. And then you think you're smart by trying to get your buddies to attack me. I'm taking you down and then going to piss on you. You already took everything from me. I'm going to destroy you and everything you build. Go fuck yourself. Grow done balls and come to Florida. Let's see what happens to those teeth. Hiding like a bitch. We should settle our cases and differences. If like to focus on the future and my family. Wow, wow, what a roller coaster. What a ro roller like a Florida man. That's right. Um, so it turns out he has a history of this stuff. Uh, on July, July 8, 2002, Rizada went into the U.S. Bank in Kansas to deposit funds from Cellular for Less. He had already had one teller working on his deposit when he gave another teller about $2,000 and asked her to change the money into large bills. When the teller asked Rosada for his ID and social security card, an incident occurred. <laughs> an incident occurred. Uh, I lost my place. Hold on a second. Uh, uh, when the teller... Okay, say According to the bank personnel, Rosada called the tellers fucking whores and fucking bitches. He allegedly spit on a bank supervisor and punched her in the chest because he thought he was being racially profiled. Because of the incident, Rizada was arrested and charged with two counts of battery and one count of disorderly conduct. Instead of doing any jail time, he agreed to 12-month diversion program and was mandated to participate in anger management class. One of the tellers had, who decided to sue Rizada received a settlement. So he has a, he has a history of incidents uh, and, and so, yeah, it's, he said, what he says, I think that the racist things he says is how he feels and the homophobic things he says is how he feels. Goten Briggs says, uh, he said some, st uh, some of this stuff in a very offhanded manner where there was no gain. It was just mean spirited. And the people he was talking to, he directed these things to was, um, was, uh, Jace Hall. You, we all know Jace. I think everybody knows Jace Hall in the games industry. Um, and uh and he's he used to lead uh, h1z1 and he used to just be he used to just be actually just a personality um and then rick fox himself so i guess i guess uh he was saying things to these individuals and it was reported and then the lcs commission I guess, <laughs> uh, got involved and said that he needs to go and they have 60 days to do it. So I don't know how they're going to do it, but they have to 60 days to figure this shit out to get this, uh, this piece of shit, I guess, out of their, uh, uh, out of their ownership group. Uh, this is not a vengeance thing for me personally at all. It's more of a repair the world type thing and to give people the truth about what's been going on. So Gut Gutenberg has not only witnessed the type of behavior that Rosada exudes, but also has been a victim himself, which is the reason why he came forward now. So let's go back to that. Uh, let's go back to that, um, that teller who won a settlement. You imagine there's two of them that I guess were assaulted during this whole thing. And only one of them actually pursued, uh, uh, an actual settlement. You imagine being that one that didn't, that you didn't take advantage of that. Like you had a millionaire come in and just like harass you and do all this shit and cause all this, all this drama. And you could have cashed out and you missed out. Could have taken a settlement just like that. Uh, now you're still working at the bank. So anyways, that is, um, it's funny. Actually, I went to this guy's account. I went to this guy's account to go and look and see, uh, uh, cause he has a Twitter account. Of course he does. Um, and this is his Twitter account here. He's got 3,320 followers and, uh, he doesn't have a whole lot of actual action on anything here, but I decided to go to the comments on this tweet from 2017 and, um, and he says, do the right thing and resign. And then I who do I see? I see my boy, John Smedley. He said, yeah, sure you are. Rick Fox says the state Echo Fox of a digit's racist investor. He says, don't care if you apologize. This is shameful behavior and obviously goes to the core of who you are. I was like, damn, John Smedley's getting involved. <laughs> so... So yeah, it's uh this is this is not just um this is this is not a small thing. Oh boy, Smedley. Get him, get him, Smed. Uh yeah, it's uh it, it, this is this is pretty interesting news. I you don't see this very often on an investor le on an investor level because uh on the investor level typically things are swept under the rug or there's enough money to keep things hush or whatever. Like some of these some of these people think that they can just say whatever they want and get away with it and because of money, right? And in many cases, it's true. Investors tend to be sensible too. Uh, yes and no. Yes and no. Uh, I, I've been in a few investor meetings. Let me tell you, like they're, 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 they're not, they're not racist, but they're damn sure sexist. <laughs> At least some of them are. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's pretty, um, it's a pretty interesting case here. So, ah, oh, what else? Oh man.
I got, I got, oh, there, so there is a Riot update, but it's not much of an update. They put out, uh, they put out an announcement saying that they're actually going to go through and, and I don't have a, do I have a Riot, but I don't. We can just substitute this, I guess, for the meantime. Uh-oh. Oh, <gasps> my Randy button doesn't work! No! I'm on you button. Ah! The broken fucking Steam Deck. Stream Deck. Sorry. All right. Ah, uh, so. your shit Elgato god damn it all right so they did put out that they're going to they 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 oh man so they built some forums I guess uh and uh a diversity and something collaboration so they put together a group of folks uh made out of employees to actually go and to, to to be representatives of the company um inclusion thank you thank you thank you so much diversity and inclusion that's exactly what it is uh they put together a group of folks to uh, to basically be the the ambassadors for the uh, um uh, for the company uh, for the employees to help them work on their updated terms of service and everything they are not going to remove their uh they're actually not going to remove the uh um the forced arbitration clause for existing team members yet, right? I guess whenever they get around to, to figuring out how they're going to do that, they're going to do that. Uh, but for new employees, they're going to give them the option to opt out. Right? Is that what it said? Hold on a second. I want to make sure that's exactly what it says because that's pretty, pretty... Yes. All right. At a minimum, we will give new rioters the option to opt out of arbitration on individual sex or sexual harassment claims. Um... I feel like they should give people the option to opt in. Like by, def by default, you're opted out, right? Cause I'm not sure if this is something that's kind of <laughs> like, I don't feel, I feel like this is something that's gonna be some super fine print. Oh, you could have opted out, but you, to you chose not to. Uh, I think by default, they should be opted out and then they should opt in if they want to. Yeah, I would, I would love to actually opt into uh, forced arbitration if I were to get sexually harassed, sure. Uh, so yeah, this is, uh, this is, it's a very small step. So that's why I wasn't even actually gonna, I wasn't even gonna mention it because it's a very small step. Not a whole lot's changed really. Um, they have a, they actually do have a, uh, a, a timeline here that they're going to work on. If this thing ever moves, uh, Elgato, please, uh, we'll just wait. Is it not going to do it? Now it's not going to do it. All right. Well, I'll just tell you guys. So they do have a, I know, I'm waiting for it just to go. Uh, <laughs> uh, so they do have a 30, 60, and 90 day plan where they're going to, <laughs> where they're going to uh, uh, implement all these changes that were requested by the, uh, by the employees. And so, um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, like some of this stuff, I don't know how they're going to enforce this up internally. I feel like this is again, this is all up to the actual uh, this is all up to the actual employees to to make sure this stuff is um, is enforced. Is it, it works there? What the fuck? I don't understand. Uh, so we'll have to just check back in with that another time. In I guess and I guess like other weird news. You guys ever heard of that? What is that? What is that show? Um, Game of Thrones. That's right. Game of Thrones. You guys heard of that, right? So it's got its last, its final episode coming up, and there is a petition. <laughs> there's a petition to have the show reshot. Fuck you, Dylan. Um, to have the show redone with competent writers, and it's got eight hundred and ninety-five thousand nine hundred and sixty-one, two, three, four people have signed. Um, Best season ever! <laughs> so, this is gonna hit a million. It's gonna hit a million. But let's not forget that one of the biggest reasons why this is so... Um, why this is so uh, uh, big and so many signatures is because every news outlet is, po is posting it. Um, so... Yeah, I agree. It's not, it's definitely not up to expectations. The season is definitely not to, up to probably anybody's expectations. But this is never going to happen. This is never going to happen. Uh, but the, again, the, one of the main reasons why I was expecting that to wait a while, I was going to talk while I, was, while I was sitting on that screen. Uh, but yeah, the only reason why I have so many, so many actual um, uh, signatures is purely because it's been promoted it's all over the place. But 
it's just not going to help. It's not going to help. And yeah, exactly. Exactly. Sign yourself like that. Just put your name on a list. That's right, Dark. Exactly. Uh, don't volunteer. Put your name on a list. I mean, this thing already pulled up my name. It's Michael Bailey, Santa Clara, California. Uh, where the fuck is Santa Clara? Is that a, is that a county? I don't even know. Um, that's not a city, right? No, Santa Clara is the county. It's a county. Fuck, I should, I, I've been living here for five years, guys. Uh, sadly, we got a Sonic, uh, rework before that happens. We will, actually. We will. <laughs> I think it's way more of a way to register severe dislike for people, uh, with the people in power. But nothing's gonna happen. They're not going, this is such a far-fetched thing. They're never, they're never gonna reshoot in the entire season. It's just not gonna happen. Um... That's where the 49ers stadium is at. Oh, that's what I, sh I should know better. I should fucking know better. And lastly, lastly, and this is some big news for some of you guys. For some of you guys. You guys, uh, uh, you guys know who, um, you guys know who Riley Reed is? You guys should know who Riley Reed is. So Riley Reed is a, uh, she is a pornographic actress. And, um, so with that, with that job description, typically she has sex with a lot of people. And now she's expanding a little bit. And uh, she was on Manuel Ferreira's uh, show, or uh, on his stream, who is another porn star. Um, and she is saying that uh, uh, she is... Now, well, I'll just go ahead and let her tell you guys. I'll just go ahead and let her tell you guys. Besides driving yeah. a car naked on Twitch, yeah. that would not go well. Ooh, but I'll start fucking listen, Twitch if... boys. Oh. I did the SoundCloud rappers. Got the YouTubers. Now I'm fucking all the Twitch boys. Sliding wow. my DMs. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, so loud. Oh wow, ears. So there you go. So if you're, if you were, if you had some kind, now it's gonna stay there. Of course it is. Fucking stream deck. Oh. <laughs> so now, if you're looking for, uh, if if you're if you're looking for maybe a chance, you could just slide into those DMs. Slide into those DMs, and you you can have a chance to. To film a film a video with uh, with Riley Reed, so there you go, there you go. I just want to throw that out because you know if if I was uh, if I was a single dude and probably like I don't know didn't have quite as much self respect uh, as I do now, maybe just a little bit less, just a little bit less. Uh, I would slide into them DMs super fast. So I figure I'll let you guys know. Just trying to hook you guys up. All right, so there you go. That's it. Uh, ah. <sighs> Time to start a streaming career then. Yeah, see? Yeah, what, I wonder if there if there is like if she has a like criteria, like how many how many viewers can do you have like, you know, what's your what is your peak peak viewership? <laughs> uh, you can't go full time stream. Oh, see? See? Must be a Twitch partner. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, terrible. Terrible. Jeez. Uh, all right, so that's it. That's it for the news today. Make sure you slide in those DMs. She says SoundCloud, rec uh, SoundCloud rappers. Uh, her standards can't be that high. You know, I I didn't know that. She, I, I've heard like bang bus and banging a fan and all that stuff because that's like a like a trope. It's a pornography trope. But I didn't know there was a SoundCloud banging SoundCloud rappers trope. I had no idea. How do you even go through and do that? Like SoundCloud is so convoluted with all kinds of shitty tracks. Do you just like oh this this one track got good production? I'm fucking make a video of this guy. I don't understand how that works. Uh, <laughs> so that's it. My name is Mike B. You can find me, aka Mike B, on all the things. And this is Chat, Uncle Chat. You can find them right here, right here, and also on twitch.tv slash aka Mike B. Donut, come here. Come here, say bye. Come here, buddy. Come here. Come here, Donut. Come here, buddy. Come here, come here, come here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come here. Oh, yes. Oh. There we go. Oh, yes. All right. So that's it. We'll see you guys next time for some. Goodbye. <laughs>